Welcome to the Unshackler Awards 2023. This here is the eighth awards that we have done. So it's been eight years now that we've been doing this for, and we've got another special for you being presented on Australia Day. And I hope everybody has had a great Australia Day and enjoyed themselves. My name is Damien Ferry, the senior editor of The Unshackled, and I'll be presenting the awards. There is a set of 12 awards, of course, and the awards will be run from bottom to top. And there's a top 10. Out of the top 10 awards, there'll be 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, until we get the winner of each award setting, of course. So we will go through all the 10 awards, and we will start that now. So first of all, we got the Fake News of the Year Award, 2023. In the past, we've had previous winners such as CNN, ABC, that's won it four times, and also the Project and Daily Mail last year. And we'll see how they fare in these awards coming up. So we've had the New Daily, SBS, 7 News, CNN, 9 News, news.com.au, crikey, and in third place with 17% is The Guardian. The Guardian, of course, is a very far leftist uh, online publication, and um, they've continued to, throughout time, for many, many years now, spew their rubbish, and it's great that they've got the third place. The second place, of course, 22% 20, 20, 20, is The Project, and The Project a TV show that shouldn't really even be on air considering the low ratings that they receive. And it's just amazing that they're still on there. And the, the guests they've had and the presenters, of course, very, very biased. But the winner, and one that's won four times in the past, at 39% is the ABC. Now the ABC has programs such as Media Watch, Q&A with Patricia Carvelis, these are programs that are very skewed, very biased, and again, from a national broadcaster that is supposed to be fair and balanced, doesn't really represent the views of ordinary Australians. We will now move on to the 2023 International Media Personality of the Year. We've had previous winners, such as Milo, PJW, Tucker Carlson, has won it four times in a row the last four years and we'll see how they all fare. So the nominees, Luke Rutkowski, Russell Brand, Katie Hopkins, Stu Peters, Tim Poole, Elijah Schaefer, Alex Jones, and with 15% of the vote in third place, Paul Joseph Watson, someone that's quite popular on YouTube and other podcasts and has done a great job over the years. In our 20%, we've got Candace Owens. Candace Owens in second place. And now Candace Owens has definitely had a, a, a major falling with Ben Shapiro as of late. He's someone that uh, definitely doesn't spout the views of, uh, of the left or even on the neocon right. So one of those presenters that are, are skewing away, that they're going away from that neocon base that the right used to have at least 20 years ago and are starting to slowly embrace a more patriotic um, alternative to the right wing. And with 55% in first place, Tucker Carlson once again, and this is the fifth year that he's won these awards. Now he used to be at Fox News, of course, and has since left, and he's uh, got his own show, and he's done very well. So Fox News were very silly to, uh, to get rid of him. And we'll be now moving on to the next award. Of course, we've got the 2023 Degenerate of the Year Award, a favourite amongst many people. We've had previous winners, such as Vanya, Tom Bollard, Jessica Yaniv, Hunter Biden, Anthony Fauci and Joffa Corfay. And we'll go through the list right now. So we've got the nominees are David Van, Philip Schofield, James Hayward, Hugh Edwards, Ruben Kay, of course, the Jewish drag queen that appeared on the project. Yumi Steins. Sam Smith. In third place, 17% of the vote, we've got Penny Wong. Of course, in government at the moment, high mysterial position. 
um, a lesbian, someone that's uh, that's very close to communist China, or a little bit too close for my liking, and someone definitely worth third place in Degenerate of the Year. In second place, 22% of the vote, we've got Dylan Mulvaney, obviously the transgender person, uh, overseas, Bud Light, all the, the ads that backfired because of that person's representation of the product, and definitely worthy of the second position. Now with 26% of the vote, in first position, Hunter Biden. Now Hunter Biden won it in 2020, so it's been a couple of years now. And he's known for drugs and prostitutes, he's loving for those two things. And also his dodgy dealings with Ukraine, son of the president at the moment. So definitely someone worthy of that position. In the next award, 2023 Culture Warrior of the Year. Previous winners we've had, Sam Hyde, Daisy Cousins, Jacinta Price, Mark Latham, Andrew Pavalu. We'll see how they all fare in this award. Going down the list, we've had nominees such as Gary Johns, Anthony Dillon, Augusto Zimmerman, Kobe Thatcher, Andrew Sedra, Kira Lee Smith, Moray Deeming, and now in third place, 14% of the vote, Warren Mundine. Warren Mundine played a, a crucial role, of course, in the No campaign, and um, definitely is one of those Aboriginal voices that seems to stray from what the ABC and other leftists uh, think is what they're supposed to be feeling, what they're supposed to be thinking. So someone that is, um, has rejected the, the wokeness and has continued to uh, fight and, and at least feel that he's representing his people and what they're really saying to him. In second place on 18%, Mark Latham, and Mark Latham, another person that has really been anti-woke, really striving the, the agenda of free speech, going forth, trying to fight for our rights. Um, he used to be a One Nation uh, leader in New South Wales, of course got demoted, unfortunately. But someone that has always uh, definitely not been one to censor himself and has spoken his mind, which is what we need more in politics. On 45%, in first place, Jacinta Price. Now, Jacinta Price won it in 2019, and she was the crucial vote the crucial supporter of the No campaign, the one really driving our side of the argument, and one that done a really good job. She's uh, definitely won a lot of support because of her performance over that debate, over that referendum, and I believe has a, a big future in politics. So now we're going on to the 2023 Triggered Feminist of the Year Award. Previous winners we've had We've had Hillary Clinton, Sarah Hansen Young, Greta Thunberg, Clementine Ford, and Lydia Thorpe. We'll go down the list of nominees. We've got as nominees Louise Milligan, Megan Markle, Vanessa Van Badham, Magda Zubansky, Katie Gallagher, Patricia Carvelis, Sarah Hansen Young. In third place on 13% of the vote, Brittany Higgins, and of course, Brittany Higgins. I believe would have been a good first spot position with the amount of damage she's done, the damage to her credibility and her future. I mean, of course, she's won a couple of million dollars out of this, so she felt that it was worth it. But in the end, it just goes to show the system and how corrupt people are and how they will destroy your lives for a dollar. It's really a big shame. And she's brought a lot of shame to her name and it's going to be very hard for her to get anywhere in life now because people won't be able to trust her. On second place, in 25% of the vote, we've got Clementine Ford, of course, one of the biggest feminists in Australia, um, someone that continues to write books. And, um, I mean, she, she's won it twice in the past, in 2020 and 22. So someone that, um, yeah, is a man-hater and, and is doing a lot of damage in society in general. In first place, 29%, and the winner, we've got Lisa Wilkinson. Lisa Wilkinson used to work for the project, of course, no longer. Uh, she was involved in the whole Brittany Higgins scenario. We all heard the audio recordings, and basically it appeared to me and appeared to many people that it was all a setup. I mean, they were politically trying to use this to their advantage because of the 2019 election at the time. 
And this is something that uh, people have to realize because there's a lot of people out there that are doing this damage and it's all for personal gain. It's all about climbing, climbing up the ladder of prosperity, so to speak. So now we're going to go to the 2023 Cis White Male of the Year Awards. Previous winners we've had Corey Bernardi, Tommy Robinson, Tony Abbott, Craig Kelly, Kyle Rittenhouse and Barclay McGain. So we've had a lot of different winners on this award. Now, our nominees this year, Angry Anderson, George Christensen, Gerard Rennick, Alex Antich, Matt Canavan, Novak Djokovic, Conor McGregor. With 15% of the vote, in third place we've got Peter Dutton. Now, Peter Dutton, to be fair, has been a bit of a disappointment. But, I mean, there is... A lot of people think that there's still hope there. But at the end of the day, the Liberal Party has gone so far to the left that even if he does want to do something remotely conservative, he always is going to have the backlash within his own ranks and the party bosses and people breathing down his neck. So it's a very difficult position to be in the Liberal Party in modern age. But nevertheless, hopefully he snaps out of it and he starts to be a real leader. If he wants to win the next election, he's going to have to go hard and not be a softie. Otherwise, he's not going to get anywhere. And previous elections have proved that. If we look at 2013 and the landslide and we look at other elections after that, there's a big difference there. Big difference. So the approach, they know what approach to take. Let's see if they take it. In second place, 19% Sam Newman, someone that's very anti-woke, speaks his mind and is not afraid to say what he has to think. And that's what we need in society. On 30%, in first place, Malcolm Roberts. Malcolm Roberts a great conservative, he's been in the One Nation Party for a while now and has done a great job against the vaccine mandates, really really one of the, the key figures that have been speaking out against all these agendas, digital ID, another one. Lots of things happening at the moment that's very scary for our future and he's someone that's really out there uh, pushing our cause. So hopefully he's going to be there for many more years to come and hopefully many more people like that will come out as well. Our next award is 2023 International Cuck of the Year. Now, previous winners we've had, Justin Trudeau, he's won it three times. So he's a, a key favourite here. Richard Di Natale, Prince Harry, he's done it twice, and Kevin Rudd last year. We'll see how they fare. So we've got in our nominees listings, Kevin Rudd, Emmanuel Macron, Philip Lowe, Joe Biden, Mark Speakman, John Pizzuto, Prince Harry. In third place on 14%, we've got Volodymyr Zelensky. Of course, a, a massive cuck, Volodymyr is. Just a spokesman for the globalist elites in Ukraine and someone that is killing a lot of Eastern European lives. All for foreign and uh, alternate agendas that we're not spoken about, of course. In second place, favourite, Justin Trudeau with 18%. I mean, talk about a leader, he's definitely one of the biggest cucks. Very far left, very communist, Marxist, is a disgrace of a person, and someone that is driving Canada into the ground. With 36%, remarkably, Chris Bowen in first place. A senior minister, of course, someone that's really pushing these renewable policies. The 2030 agenda, of course. Someone that is uh, really close to communist China. So he's definitely a, a candidate that is worthy of winning this award. The next award is 2023 International Unshackler of the Year. Now, previous winners we've had, Donald Trump, he's won it four times, Fraser Anning, Ron DeSantis, and Pauline Hanson. We'll see how they fare in this award listing for this year. So we've got Winston Peters, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Nigel Farage, Pauline Hansen, Vivek Ramaswamy, Elon Musk, Viktor Orban. In third place with 15%, Gert Wilders, someone that's uh, done really well over the last couple of years, pushing the anti-immigration wave, because there's a lot happening in Western Europe, of course, with uh, many waves of immigrations uh, happening to their country, and 
slowly getting replaced demographically, which isn't really a conspiracy theory, it's pure fact. So anybody that speaks out about this is definitely going to be um, supported by the public. And they're going to continue to gain ground, these right-wing parties. In second place on 19%, Harvey A. Millay, a real freedom uh, activist, uh, a freedom politician, and the president of Argentina, of course, someone that is uh, doing well economically for the country, is really pushing good reforms, trying to get rid of all the, the terrible socialist po policies of the past, and hopefully someone that will continue to fight for freedom for his people. In first place, of course, 22% Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump back at it after winning four times previously. This is the fifth time he's won it. He's uh, definitely looking to be the Republican nominee. I don't think there's anybody that can come close to him in the matchup. And I'm sure that he's someone that would be able to take on and defeat Joe Biden. And hopefully the elections don't have any fishy things happening to him because, I mean, really, for Biden to win a second term, um, I think there's going to be a lot of questions raised because it just doesn't... I mean, it was, it was difficult to accept the first time, but the second time... I mean, you definitely really have to be asking questions if you haven't already. So here we go. Uh, we've got now two big awards coming up. The first of the big awards is the 2023 Australian Unshackler of the Year. The big award for all of the goodies. So previous winners we've had, we've had people like Eve Black, Rod Cullerton and Harrison McLean. Now we've got uh, our nominee list. We've got Darren Bergworth, David Limbrick, Tricky Tritty, John Ruddick, Rukshan Fernando, Nick Patterson, John Adams. And in third place with 14%, Maria Z. And Maria's been great. Uh, she's obviously very popular online. And she's uh, been on the Stupidas show, for instance. Stupidas is great. And, I mean, she's really pushing the deep, deep issues. I mean, if you want to go the next level, definitely tune in to her and she'll take you on that uh, rabbit hole down where you need to be. So there's a lot for you to learn when you're looking at um, stuff that Maria Z is, is putting out there. In second place, 17% Ralph Babbitt. And Ralph has been another great senator. He's definitely spoken his mind and been pro-freedom. And uh, he's really ramming against these digital ID uh, policies that are uh, coming out, the, the legislation. So, I mean, this is something that we really need to do something about because AI is going to be a really destructive agenda. Uh, digital ID, full control from the state, of course. You're not going to be able to do anything. And um, th that's what they want, an enslavement system. So anyone speaking out against that is definitely friends of ours. And in first place... 29% we've got Ozzy Kozak, Simeon Boykov, of course, and he's been really critical of the overseas wars. He's been critical of Israel. He's been critical of Ukraine. He's uh, been at the forefront of this pan pandemic that we've had over the last few years. He's railed home against that, made sure that he's definitely aired his views, and he's not afraid of censorship or anything, or any basically, uh, I mean, he's been taken away in a paddy wagon many times, so... He's fierce, and he's the type of person that we need out on the scene. And um, this is the last award that we've got now. Uh, the 2023 Australian Regressive of the Year. Previous winners we've had is Waleed Ali, of course. We've had Dan Andrews. He's won it five times, so he's been a big favourite in the past. And Tom Tanuki. So we'll go down the nominee list and see how they fare. So our nominees were Jacinta Allen... Anastasia Palaszczuk, Roger Cook, Linda Burney, Stan Grant, Lydia Forp, Thomas Mayo, and in third place on 14%, Marsha Langton, Aboriginal activist, of course, the feminist, someone that has, uh, has definitely blamed the white man for all of her problems and is uh, just brutal. So someone that, um, thank God, she did terribly in the voice campaign. On the second, uh, second place we've got here now is 23% Anthony Albanese, the current Prime Minister, someone that's destroyed the, uh, the, the country economically. He's um, done major reversals and, 
and definitely um, hasn't stuck by his promises. And continue also on, on the social front to make drastic changes to all the sorts of different systems in place, such as family law and many other matters. So someone that's definitely done a terrible job and hopefully we won't see him next term. In first place, well deserving on 45% Davir Abramovich. Now Davir, obviously, he is the, the key figure of the Anti-Defamation Commission. He's an enemy of free speech. He's someone that continues to make sure that nobody can express themselves or say what they feel if ultimately it uh, is counter to his beliefs and to his agenda. So a very dangerous person and anybody that supports him or his ideology should be deemed as very dangerous. So he was definitely worthy of that award on first place with 45% of Via Abramovich. And that's all of the awards that we have. Now, we've had a really critical year that it's passed us. We're way beyond, way over the pandemic, thank God for that. But we've got a lot of drastic issues that are coming into play. Digital ID legislation right there under our noses. The 2030 agenda continually being pushed. And ultimately, there's a lot to basically fight for still to this day. We have to be really careful, we have to voice our opinions, and we have to make sure that we don't let the current elites step over us, the globalists, because they will do whatever they can to make sure that our life is miserable and that they put us into the ground as much as they can and can ultimately have full control over us. So what I suggest is, guys, tune in. Um, go on our website, theunshackled.net, of course. Make sure that you become fans, like our Facebook, Get on the social media websites. It's been great talking to you. This is the eighth time we've done this and we'll do many more to come in the year. Obviously, this is done because of Australia, um, Australian of the Year that they normally present, normally not being representative of what people would regard as great Australians. So we thought that we'll put our own nominees up and make sure that our people have the options and uh, options to vote and also options to see something different and something that isn't so skewed and biased. And that's what we need. We need people to speak out and to voice their concerns and make sure we get um, our opinions heard as well. So there was 10 awards, 10 nominees per award. Uh, it was great to be with you and I hope to see you next year when we then present the 2024 Unshackler of the Year Awards. And right now, enjoy your Australia Day, and we will be with you again shortly. Goodbye.